Seriously, when the hell did gold kryptonite turn Clark into a black man named Chaz? Bendis totally pulled this directly from his ass. Oh my god. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and today I'm going to review Action Comics 1009. If you're expecting a roast to the book, I hate to disappoint. As all in all, it's not bad. It's not good either. It's comfortably mediocre. I haven't been reviewing Superman comics on the channel, but my Bendis Superman family video garnered a good amount of interest, so I'm listening to my viewers and covering more Superman. Issue 1009 is a setup for the upcoming DC Comics event Leviathan. There's not a lot of new ground covered in the book, it's mostly just Superman observing the fallout from 1008 until the reveal in the last panel, which I'll cover at the end of the review. Leviathan promises a mystery thriller that stretches across the DC universe and touches every character from Batman to Superman to The Question to Talia al Ghul. The appearance of The Question is probably my favorite part of this book, but I'm getting ahead of myself. While I am highly critical of Bendis' work on both Superman titles, DC Comics has blessed him with top shelf artists. The issue opens with Superman and Lois monitoring worldwide events as covert agencies are being dismantled worldwide. Artist Steve Epting does a great job making this page feel chaotic, as the moment necessitates, but it's still easily traversed by the reader. Epting displays his tight line art style throughout the issue, and he's easily the superhero of this creative pairing. Color artist Brad Anderson does great work accentuating Epting's dramatic style, and in his very few moments of action, Superman looks and feels powerful. The biggest issue with the art is honestly the storytelling. Superman does little of consequence during the issue as he flies around the world seeing the aftermath of Leviathan's terrorist actions. You get the feeling Epting and Anderson are chomping at the bit to create soups, doing something more fitting his powerful character. Steve Epting does better than the material presented should dictate, and I'll give the art a 4.5 out of 5. One of my least favorite parts of Bendis' run with Superman has been his dismantling of Lois Lane as a character. This is escalated in Action Comics 1009 as she berates Amanda Waller, who arrived as a cliffhanger in 1008. Lois is presented as an ear-splitting banshee dressing down Waller, who clearly just escaped with her life when she arrived at their apartment. Waller called Clark Superman in public, so Lois yells at her for what feels like five or six pages while Superman, a rational character, tries to discover what exactly is happening. Amanda Waller allowing this is severely out of character, and the worst part is when Lois knocks her out with one punch. Easily the best part of the story is the question sitting beside Lois' father Sam when Big Blue arrives. The character is presented as intelligent and has a gravitas that elevates an otherwise blasé issue. It appears the question has a major role to play in the upcoming Leviathan event, and so far his inclusion is well presented. Brian Michael Bendis has serious issues with dialogue, as in he seriously uses far too much. Admittedly, there is a good amount of important information presented in this double-page spread, but Bendis and editor Mike Cotton have to get this under control. This is absolutely ridiculous by today's standards and detracts heavily from the overall story. Bendis has major issues with characterization and dialogue management as usual and I'll give his character work a 1.5 out of 5. Brian Michael Bendis is typically much better at writing coherent story arcs than developing character moments and that is the case with Action Comics 1009. After Lois and Clark discover Waller at their apartment, they take her to the Fortress of Solitude, which is now located in the Bermuda Triangle. Ugh, so stupid. She explains that she was supposed to meet Lois's father, but was ambushed and tried to escape to three more safe houses before finding Clark as a last resort. She informs Lois her father suffered a heart attack, but was spared by Leviathan and is in protective custody in a hospital. Superman checks on Samuel Lane, discovering the question is waiting for whoever is after him. He acknowledges Leviathan is behind the attacks and observes there aren't many bodies at the scenes. Superman visits the Batcave to find Batman indisposed, and he and Alfred, and he and Alfred agree that these Leviathan attacks don't fit Talia al Ghul's M.O., and this new Leviathan is not her organization. 
Superman talks to Director Bones of the DEO before heading back to the Fortress of Solitude. Jimmy Olsen is presenting footage he took before his near-death experience in 1008. Waller, Lois, and Clark discuss the various spy agencies around the world when Lois keeps saying the name Chaz. Lois decides they need to infiltrate Spiral, and with the help of gold kryptonite, the couple break out their undercover Chaz and Andy personas. Seriously, when the hell did gold kryptonite turn Clark into a black man named Chaz? Bendis totally pulled this directly from his ass. Oh my god. The overall story doesn't move much in this issue, and the question's appearance and the final reveal are the only real moments of consequence. I'll give the plot a 2 out of 5. Bendis has a unique style that taken as individual pieces, his books aren't bad. It's only when you view them as entire stories you see the full extent of his damage to characters and continuity. This isn't a good or bad issue. Like I said before, it's comfortably mediocre, and I'll give it a 2.5 out of 5 overall due to the outstanding artwork. I don't really recommend this book unless you're really into this title or excited about the Leviathan event. If you want to save some money, you can easily skip this issue and move to Action Comics 1010 knowing you didn't really miss much. Please stay tuned to the channel for future Superman and Action Comics reviews. I'll also be releasing my first Signature Series video this Sunday and will be covering the dismantling of DC's Vertigo Comics by Andy Curry and crew.